A little while ago, I was hired by Red Bull Switzerland to do some underwater video work for them. Now, as I normally do after such a job, I um, analyze why I was hired for the job so I can replicate that and get more work like this in the future. As I was doing this for this gig, I realized something that I want to share with you today that might also help you to get more paid client work as an underwater videographer in the future. Coming up. Hey there underwater filmmakers, thank you very much for tuning in again, it's great to have you back here on the channel. Now today's video is going to be slightly different than what you're used to here on the channel, we're not going to be talking about uh, tips and tricks to help you improve your underwater filmmaking and it's not a gear review either. Today I want to give you some, um, some input and maybe some inspiration on how you can increase your chances on getting paid client work as an underwater videographer. Now the reason why I want to make this video is because I did get um, hired by Red Bull just a little while ago by Red Bull Switzerland that is for some underwater videography work. Red Bull Switzerland does a um, creator um, academy pro camp once a year and the camp that they were holding and hosting this year had the topic water. So they reached out to me and they asked whether or not I wanted to be one of the coaches um, for that camp, helping the participants that were hand-picked. There was um, six people, six young content creators, photographers and videographers that Red Bull picked. Um, and the two coaches, which was myself and Kim, who was the photography coach, we were meant to help these people develop their skills uh, when it came to taking photos and videos in, around and underwater. This job was really cool and I enjoyed every single second of it. Because if you know myself, if you've known my channel for a while, you probably know how passionate I am about passing on my knowledge about underwater filmmaking to people that are eager to learn. And that was exactly what I was able to do during that um, three-day camp that Red Bull was putting together there. We spend an evening in the classroom going through some basic theory stuff and then the next morning we jumped into a pool at a local um, sort of water themed park. Um, they had a um, wave pool there as well which was great because we could use the wave pool to try to capture some shots. Now the whole intention of this camp was to um, just to help those hand-picked content creators which were not beginners really, they most of them are actually making a living out of being a photographer or a videographer, but Red Bull just wanted to give them the chance to learn from seasoned professionals in the topic of filming and taking photos um, in, around and underwater. Now the aim or the task that we had to fulfill as the videography team, we were split into two teams, there were three people going with um, the other coach Kim and they were doing more the photography uh, section and the other three people, they were um, spending the time with me mostly and we were doing some um, video stuff in the water and underwater. And the aim for us was to create a short video sequence um, using a miniature figure, like a water sports figure, like a surfer or something like that, um, and uh, create a small sequence using that figure as our main character in the movie. So we used the waves, so that was our idea to use the waves in the wave pool to be able to, um, to make that surfer surf on the wave and recreate a real, real life um, sequence that we've seen on television before. It was a lot of fun to try different things and techniques and seeing what worked and what didn't. In the end, we ended up not using the waves from the wave pool to recreate the shots that we wanted because they were just not predictable and they were all over the place. We couldn't really get a nice breaking wave. 
So in the end, we used a underwater scooter. We used the Lefit S1 Pro underwater scooter and uh, used that one to create a smaller, more controlled wave that we could then use to have our surfer surf on that wave, emerge out of the wave, all that sort of stuff. And this is the little video that the three videographers created. I think it turned out really cool and they did a great job and I loved being part of this process, helping them acquiring the shots that they needed to get this sequence done. So after this assignment was over, I took some time as I normally do after a job that I've really enjoyed to figure out why I got hired for this job so I can make sure that I can recreate this scenario and get more jobs like this in the future. Now, obviously, um, people need to know what you do and there is different ways of achieving this. And that was the reason why I got this job, because a business partner of myself, who is a friend and business partner of the person who was organizing the um, Red Bull Creator Academy Pro Camp, he knew that I was teaching underwater filmmaking. Um, I think we talked about this when we saw each other last time, which was about probably a year ago. And we spent some time talking about what he does. And we also spent some time talking about what I do. Um, and I was explaining to him um, how I've started with uh, teaching people how to film underwater, how I've created a complete online course, how I'm creating digital products to help people get better results when filming underwater, how we've started um, doing live workshops on location around the world. So he obviously knew what I, uh, what I did and what I was good at, and he has also remembered that, which is an important part of it. So not very surprisingly, people need to know what you do and what you want to do and what you do well to um, give you jobs that you really want to do as an underwater videographer, not just as an underwater videographer, basically in any field, but it also applies to underwater videography. Now, how can you do this? Well, there's different ways how you can do this. Obviously, you need to make sure that you are present on the World Wide Web. So you should really have a, um, a modern, good looking and uh, up to date website. And this is something uh, that I'm not doing very well. My website um, is fairly old already. It's not really up to date, but I've realized that and I'm working on it. And hopefully, sort of by the end of this summer, um, a new website that I'm working on right now should be going online. But that's one of the things. Um, other things are obviously being present on social media platforms. And this largely depends on what type of work you're doing, which platforms you're going to choose. For me personally, I'm doing a lot of um, educational content and gear reviews, that sort of stuff, longer content. Um, YouTube is one of the best one of the best platforms for me and uh, that's my main platform that I work with. It might not be the best platform for you. Maybe you do more um, commercial work, maybe you do more um, short stuff, documentary stuff. So other platforms could be more appropriate for you. Also submitting your work to underwater um, competitions might be a very good idea and might help you gain some exposure. This is how I scored my jobs for the CMAS when I was filming um, the event clips and event material for their uh, past underwater videography and, and photography world championships and the upcoming um, European championship in Madeira, where I'm also hired to do the entire um, coverage of the whole event. So by being part of these events and, and competitions can also help in, uh, in giving you some work. And there's lots of these competitions out there. Some of them are live competitions where you actually have to travel to the location and compete right there and then. But there's also other online competitions where you can just submit your work that you have done previously um, and compete with other people all around the world that way. 
Again, depending on what type of work you do, film festivals could also be a very good idea. Let's say if you're more in the documentary filmmaking um, or in, uh, in short films, then submitting your work to film festivals can really be a good idea to get some extra exposure and maybe get in touch with people that uh, might want to hire you for certain jobs. But the one thing that I think is most important when it comes to um, scoring the right work or the work that you really want to get as an underwater videographer, again, not just as an underwater videographer, but also uh, as someone filming primarily underwater, is to actually talk about what you do. All the platforms and everything, that's great, but you do need to also talk about what you do tell people about it, tell people in your surroundings about it. That's how I scored that um, Red Bull gig. If I hadn't talked to my uh, business partner, my friend, and had told him all about why I'm so passionate about uh, teaching other people how to film underwater, he would have probably not thought of me and maybe someone else would have gotten that job. But because I talk about it all the time, um, when people ask me what I do, I always explain them in, in quite detail what I do, but also why I do it. And I think that's a very important sub part of it too. Not just what you do, but why you do it. What's your motivation behind it? Why do you do what you do? That's what really interests people and that's what also moves people. And for me, it, it's very clear. I have the mission to enable as many divers out there as possible to be able to capture their underwater adventures in the best possible way. Simple reason, I think we do not have enough underwater content on our social media platforms and I have the dream of just flooding all these social media platforms with stunning high quality underwater content. And I can't do that all by myself. Even if I was diving 24 seven all year round, I just, I just don't have the capacity to do that. I can only do that with your help. So that's quite logically then the next step. I need to um, make sure that I can pass on everything I know to as many people out there as I can to help you create the content that is going to be on the social media platforms, on television, uh, on the web, everywhere, so that actually people can see what beauty we have lying underneath the um, oceans and the lakes surfaces. I hope this makes sense to a certain degree and you understand what I mean. Showing your work is great, but talking about why you do what you do, I think that really is the key in getting paid client work and that kind of work, the kind of projects that you really, that you really passionate about and that you really want to do. What are your thoughts on this topic? Let me know down in the comment section below. Are you getting any paid client work yet? If so, how are you ensuring to keep getting that type of work? And if you're not getting any paid client work yet, but would like to get some, let us know what type of work you would like to be doing and why. And this brings us to the end of today's video. A, as I said, slightly different video to what I normally do here on the channel. Hopefully it was useful to you and you got something out of it. And if that's the case, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you're not missing out on any of the other content that will be coming out here very regularly. If client work is not your cup of tea, don't worry, check out the video over here, which talks about another option of how you can make money with your underwater footage. And don't forget to check out the playlist over here, which is full of tips and tricks to help you improve your underwater filmmaking skills. Until next time, enjoy capturing your underwater adventures and I will see you next week.